What is the smallest thing in the universe? Humans have been searching for the answer to this question for a long time. Previously, they thought that sand grains were the building blocks of everything around us. Then atoms were discovered, and they mistakenly thought that these particles could not be divided any further until protons, neutrons, and electrons were found within them. These particles also seem to be the most basic ones until scientists found out that each proton and neutron is formed from three quarks. Andy Parker, a British physicist and a professor of high energy physics at the University of Cambridge, wonders, this time we have not yet found evidence of things inside the quark. Does this mean that we have reached the most basic level of matter? And even if quarks and electrons can be divided, scientists do not say that they are the smallest parts of matter. Does the universe contain even smaller things? According to Don Lincoln, a senior scientist at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, he is one of the scientists trying to answer this question. At Fermilab, scientists use a particle accelerator to smash individual particles together and examine the fragments or potentially newly formed fundamental particles. Lincoln says there are two ways to measure the size of particles, investigating their mass and measuring their physical size, much like calculating the diameter of a ball. In terms of mass, these questions are relatively simple to answer. Lincoln says the least massive known particle is the neutrino. However, he points out that we do not have an accurate measure of the mass of the neutrino because the tools used to calculate the mass of fundamental particles are not sensitive enough. Lincoln says, a neutrino is like the ghost of the subatomic world. Neutrinos interact very weakly with matter and are the second most abundant particles after photons, which behave more like waves than actual particles. In fact, there are trillions of neutrinos passing through you at this very moment. Neutrinos have almost no mass and move at nearly the speed of light. Atomic nuclei are made up of neutrons, protons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons themselves are about one-tenth the size of the nucleus in general. An electron has almost zero mass, but it is actually 500,000 times heavier than a neutrino. Physicists use electron volts, E, to measure the mass of subatomic particles. Technically, the unit is E over C squared, where C is the speed of light. One electron volt is equivalent to about 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. To simplify things, physicists use a set of units in which the speed of light is one. To find the mass of a subatomic particle, you would use Albert Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, to get the mass m in kilograms. An electron weighs 511,000 electron volts, equivalent to 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms. For comparison, a typical proton in the nucleus of a typical atom weighs 938 million electron volts, or 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. On the other hand, the largest elementary particle in terms of mass that we know of is a particle called the top quark which has a mass of a whopping 172.5 billion electron volts. Quarks are another type of fundamental particle that, as far as we know, cannot be broken down into smaller parts. Scientists have found six types of quarks, up, down, strange, charm, bottom, and top. The up and down quarks make up protons and neutrons, and they weigh 3 million and 5 million electron volts, respectively. Meanwhile, the top quark is 57,500 times heavier than the up quark. The question of physical size is harder to answer. We know the physical size of some particles, but not the smallest ones. Some small particles that people hear about in everyday lives, such as viruses, are actually quite large. Lincoln gives a sense of this scale. A typical virus is about 250 to 400 nanometers long, where a nanometer is one billionth of a meter or 10 to the power of negative 9 meters, and a typical atomic nucleus is about 10 to the power of negative 14 meters in size. That means the size of an atomic nucleus is about 100,000 times smaller than a virus. Currently, the smallest physical size that scientists can measure with particle accelerators is 2,000 times smaller than a proton, or 5 times 10 to the power of negative 20 meters. So far, scientists have been able to determine that quarks are smaller than this, but they don't know by how much. 
Experiments show that tiny particles like quarks and electrons behave exactly like point particles without any spatial distribution. However, point particles make physical theories much more complicated because an object can approach a point particle infinitely close and scientists really dislike that. There's an idea called superstring theory that could solve this problem. This theory predicts that all particles, instead of being like point particles, are actually small loops of string. Nothing can approach a loop of string infinitely close because it will always be closer to one part of the loop than the others. This idea is quite appealing to physicists, as these loops could solve the problem of infinity. However, scientists still have no experimental evidence to validate string theory. Another way to solve this problem is to say that the nature of space is not continuous, but it is made up of discrete particles, an idea often likened to quantum foam. In that case, two particles can never get infinitely close because they are always separated by at least the size of a quantum foam. A strong candidate for the smallest thing in the universe is the singularity at the center of a black hole. A black hole is formed when matter is compressed so small that gravity takes over, pulling matter in and eventually compressing it into a point with infinite density. But most experts don't think that black holes have infinite density. They believe that infinity is a contradiction between the two currently dominant theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics, and only when a quantum theory of gravity is formed will we know the true nature of black holes. Physicist Andy Parker says, I think they are much smaller than quarks, but I don't believe they have infinite density. Superstrings, singularities, and even cosmic particles can all be as small as the Planck length, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 35 meters, an incredibly small number. The Planck length is much smaller than the measuring capability of any current machine. Theoretically, it is the limit of the smallest length. According to the uncertainty principle, no device can measure anything smaller because in that range, the universe is completely random and undefined. This is also the boundary between quantum mechanics and general relativity. Physicist Andy Parker says, it corresponds to the distance at which gravity is so strong that it can do crazy things, like create black holes from the energy of gravity. At the Planck length, we believe that a quantum theory of gravity will take control. Perhaps all the smallest things in the universe are nearly as small as the Planck length.